Good morning, my lovely friends. Well, as you can see, I'm dressed for the outdoors today. However, someone is sawing down trees out there. <laughs> There's um, ducks and um, I think geese and maybe some pigs from across the hillside. Um, and that's echoing all sorts of funny noises over here. And I, I sort of have to wait a little while. But I do have some fun things to talk to you about today. First of all, do you like my new earrings? Aren't they lovely? They're a present from Colleen and Micah for spending a few days with Harley and babysitting. I love them because they're sort of Southwestern. And at the same time, they're sort of reminiscent of um, Brighton, Colleen thought. But I love them, as you know, I love my um, silver and I love Southwestern. I have my new vest from Walmart on. It's one of those cropped vests and I'll show you more of this. I've shown it before. So I'm sort of killing time until I can go outside. I did start some topiaries. A while back, I bought some um, Japanese, oh, can't remember the name, but I'll remember it when I get out there. And I had been watching Linda Votter with the topiaries. Of course, she's the topiary queen of gardens. And I had bought these, um, I want to say Westwood, but it's, and waited a couple of months until they got a little bit of growth. And I've started a double topiary and a regular one. And I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of clipping outside there with you for those of you who love the, the gardening uh, segments of our videos. Well, here are my two topiaries. This one I have already started to make into a double topiary. I have started to trim the bottom into a ball and left a main stem, cut off all the things here, and this will eventually hopefully grow into a ball, and this will be my double one. Now this one, I'm going to try and take off some of the bottom stems Oh my, see my rose? This is still a bud coming up. These roses have refused to die out, right, Moose? Right, baby doll. <laughs> so now I'm trimming off some of the bottom pieces on this topiary, and then I will try and cultivate. Up oh, there go. I was hoping to get it done before they, they're cutting down trees over there. Snipping this around trying to get an idea. I'm trying to take off the bottom. Now it will start out as a small circle. You know, this is hard. Do you see how I'm trying to get a stem going here? I'll hold this up a little bit here. Can you see? <coughs> Does it look circular yet? You know, as I start to snip up here, I'm seeing that instead of one whole stem, it's starting to break off. So I have to cultivate this bottom stem a little bit more in order to get this going. What you try and do when you see these in the stores, you try and find one with a long single stem if you can. And then you just kind of go to town. I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave it at that and see how this goes through the winter. I don't expect much growth in the winter, but I will cultivate this and see if I can't elongate this stem somewhat. I'm, I'm a learner in topiaries, but they're fun. The PT man is outside, Jose, with Moosey, and they're working hard. What are we doing here with our Moosey today? I, th I think I have a, a guy from PT Guy, my right leg and stamina and overall strength in the legs and hips. Good. We want to get him walking as far as he can so he can take his cutie out on a date. Yes. Today, cutie, you got that? That's more. And, uh, <laughs> 
be able to get his uh, get his dog mojo dog going with, again. Mojo, <laughs> the dog went running around, all that stuff. Good. I had been thinking of a video that I had done a couple of videos ago where I said to everyone that I was making dumplings that night and Moosey said, oh, yum, yum, from his Moosey's world down there in the corner. And I had so many questions as to what kind of dumplings I make and could they have the recipe? Well, it was sort of a misnomer. I actually was referring to dim sum, those stuffed dumplings that you buy. And we love those. They're the Asian dumplings that you might have with um, a sauce. I do make my own sauce, but I do buy <clears throat> a Walmart and there's every variety we love except a Moosey doesn't like the plant-based ones where the, the peas are inside and they fall out. He doesn't like those. The traditional dumpling that you have with chicken soup is, is very different. And most of them are just regular dough. Either you make your own pastry and you, or you uh, buy the ready-made pastries and just cut little circles or flat pieces, drop them on top of the slightly boiling soup. And, and that's a dumpling. Or you can make your flour and mixture with milk and you can drop them in from a teaspoon. They're called the drop dumplings. Well, I thought about it. I decided to make chicken soup today, and I put a lot of chicken in here. It was sort of clean out the refrigerator today. Lots of carrots, onions, and celery, and of course, some chicken broth. Now it's been simmering for a while, and I got it into my head. Someone talked about dumplings. They kept asking me for my dumpling recipe and I had at the time was trying to refer to dim sum not really dumpling but my curiosity has gotten the best of me today and I am making dumplings. I had definitely decided to make chicken soup the night the night before last but traditionally I make it with the um, um, noodles which we love chicken noodle soup but I said how about I make some dumplings with the chicken he said Oh, uh, he said, when I think of chicken and dumpling soup, I think of my grandmother's soup and how it felt like a, a lead in my stomach after eating those doughy balls. And I thought to myself, I had had those and kind of felt the same way. So I looked for a recipe and sure enough, I found one so easy. And I did make some tiny ones because that's the idea. You don't want the big dumpling in your mouth and have to chew all this this gooey dough. Now, Moosey said no. He didn't want dumplings because his mother or grandmother used to make them, and he said they were like rocks in his stomach, just old flour things dumped into the soup. Drop biscuits or drop dumplings. Now, I found a recipe, and I'm going to try these. Now, this is half and half flour and Parmesan cheese. I'm using this one. The one that comes here. It doesn't have to be fresh. And they have to be well seasoned with parsley, basil, Italian, anything you want. Chives, whatever you want to put in. But make it a strong tasting type of a dumpling. Now the cheese is going to make it different. And I'm only putting in, I'm dropping in half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. I will take them out as soon as I see them forming. But if you like dumplings, but you think that the regular dough ones are just too heavy, like a, a ton of bricks in your stomach, try these. They're tiny and they're so tasty. Can you see all the spices in there too? So I'm gonna slice some bread with our chicken soup. And it's really one of those thick soups with tons of stuff in it. Lots of chicken, you can see the noodles not cooked yet. Lots of chicken onions, um, carrots, oh, celery. It really has a lot of goodies in it. It is a full meal, and we will have this as soon as the noodles cook. And we'll have the dumplings ready to eat. And here's the soup with some dumplings on top. The dumplings look great. And we're, this is an experiment, but Moosey wanted chicken noodle soup.
filled with all kinds of goodies, but he got some. He got a little bonus on top. Parmesan cheese and flour mixed with lots of spices. They're great. And and some hot buttered rolls to go I'm with. I'm just telling you my recipe for this because it's got to be tasty, as Moo says. Well, I mixed the, the little mixture in a small bowl, and this is the only part that I filmed for you to show you what it was. And I took a teaspoonful, and I tried to put about half a teaspoonful in, just drop them when, as the, the soup had was slightly boiling. And then I covered them. It says to cover them because they do have to steam. They sort of sit on the top. You leave the top on at a slow, low boil for 15 minutes. I did turn them at one point just to see if they were solidifying, and they were. And then I took them out. So I had about a dozen of these tiny little ones. I served the soup, chicken noodle soup. It was one of my best soups, but it wasn't because of the dumplings. I had seasoned it the right way. <laughs> And I put three or four of these little dumplings. We started to eat them just to try it even before we ate the soup. But anyway, it was great. If I ever make dumplings again, the dumplings were not the star of the show. It was my chicken noodle soup. But if you ever make dumplings and you don't like that bricks in the bottom of your tummy feeling when you finish, make some of these. Easy peasy. If you want to make a lot, to two cups of, of each, but half and half with the Parmesan cheese and the flour, and then go to town just spicing it up. I've discovered that I am a little bit snowed in, and what that means, um, I'm not under the weather, I'm, um, there's an expression that is escaping me right now, but I'm in over my head, that's what I'm trying to say, with things that have to be done. And the one that is weighing most on my mind, because my birthday is coming up on the 14th of November, and I have to get this test done, the written test. It's a renewal of my license, because when you're over 80, I think it's even over 70, you have to take the written test every five years. I haven't had a ticket in 30, 35 years, and the, that one wasn't a bad one. It was... Um, <clears throat> I think driving 25 miles an hour in a 15 mile hour zone. And I had all my girls in the car. We were laughing and anyway, he was nice about it. But I did get a ticket then 30, 35 years ago. That was it. I'm a good driver. I've had no accidents. Thank God. I don't want to jinx myself. Knock on wood. But I have been studying this book. I have been underlining things and I have been taking practice tests on my iPad um, like crazy, just going and going, going. There's so many ambiguous ones. Moose said, go get the darn thing over with. If you flunk it, you just take it again. So this is weighing on my mind heavily, number one. The other thing is that <clears throat> recently I watched um, one of Sandra Salin's videos. I just love Sandra. And if you have not visited Sandra, go to her channel. Sandra is, I believe, 82. She is delightful. She is so perky and, and excitable and great personality. She's so talented. She is a professional artist. She, she, many of her paintings are in museums and things. She used to do commercials on TV back in the day. Very interesting person. Well-traveled, funny. She loves makeup. She does high-end makeup, <clears throat> but lots of hints. And um, at any rate, in her last video, it, it, her video really hit me because she talked about so many things that I, that are me. And <clears throat> One of them was all about Truman Capote back in the day in the 50s and 60s where he um, befriended all these high society ladies, including Jackie Kennedy's sister and Babe Paley, who was one of the, the um, most beautiful dressed women, wealthy woman in the city, Anne Woodward, Slim Keith, you, you name it, 
all these ladies were their friends. He cultivated their friendships. He lunched with them all over New York City. And I'm repeating a lot of what Sandra will tell you about this book. Muzi sent away for me right afterward. I said, I have to read that book. I have read other things. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Did you know that Truman Capote wrote that? He also wrote in Cold Blood, which had nothing to do with his ladies. But he called these women his swans. And in the end, not in the end, but sort of the end of Truman and his swans and Truman's what you might call swan song, his downfall, he did start writing a book which uh, is rumored not to ever be finished, but some of the big magazines, Esquire and Harper's Bazaar and, and uh, Vanity Fair, <clears throat> did publish some of his initial excerpts where he betrayed these women and their secrets and all hell broke loose after that. Well, I was living in the East Coast, in New Jersey, of course, right outside of New York City, and went through this whole thing. I was extremely interested in all of this going on. I love gossip, love girly, girly stuff, and I admired these women. I used to follow these women in the newspapers and the magazines, and then totally was immersed in the Truman Capote thing and sort of went along as a fifth wheel as they all lunched their way through New York City high society at the Hotel Carlisle and these fabulous restaurants. And I sort of lived through it, but I was really at home kind of nursing and having a bunch of babies at the time in the 50s and not, not babies in the 50s. I was in college in the 50s, but in the 60s, I was having my babies and, and um, enjoying it all vicariously. Mm -hmm. So if you do love interesting stories about that and you've heard about Truman Capote back in the day, as Sandra said, get this book. I'm just reiterating what she said and I did do what Sandra Salen said. I did get the book. But I don't have time to read it yet. I gotta pass this darn test first and a few other things. So she has uh, some some great ideas and beautiful jewelry. Her jewelry is chunky and and uh, big beautiful cuffs made out of uh, all sorts of of stones and things. I tell her that her buddy Nanny <laughs> Nanny sent you, and I I guarantee you will get to really love her. Well, as you can see, I do have my hair up today. And believe it or not, it's in a French roll in the back. It's kind of hard to, uh, I don't like hats with a lot of hair around. However, the the curls did last. It's uh, quite a number of days since I put my hair up in curlers. And um, I, I wanted to show you some of those uh, down hairdos that I did. A lot of people preferred some of the hair down with me, but yet a lot of other people like the hair up. Now, the one hairdo that I did where I sort of teased the front, it was very cool, uh, curly, and this is, I'm referring to my last video of the pink spongy curler thing, and I brought the hair back in a big roll, and then in the back used my clip. Now, I would have done, continued the roll in the back if I had had the right roll, but I don't have that back roll yet, and... <clears throat> When I came out to do some filming, Moosey was in his chair down in Moosey's world, and he looked at it and he said, you look like Marie Antoinette. Well, I'm gonna put a picture of Marie Antoinette on, and you know what? It was similar. Now, what he objected to with that hairdo was he said it was too high, too high. These gray and white hairdos were a foot above the head, and then they were decorated with flowers and pins and, and all sorts of uh, regalia. But I thought that was a funny comment. But a lot of you love that hairdo, so who knows? <laughs> I don't feel like Marie Antoinette, and Moosey certainly is not Napoleon, that's for sure. By the way, my uh, white cotton shirt, I did get this in Walmart. I'm going to just step back a little bit. It's just a normal shirt with normal shirt tails, as you can see. And 
roll up sleeves, you can roll them up, it doesn't have to tap, but everybody needs a good white crisp shirt, I think, to wear with jeans or anything, really. And of course, I love my Walmart vest. It also comes in black, I believe, and someone said navy blue. I did show this to you before, but don't be afraid of the crop look. Really, you can leave your shirt tails hanging out, and it's cozy, it's warm, it's $12.98. Not downfilled, but definitely a puffy vest. I put that uh, little short just clip of uh, Bonnie and Billy and Piper on in the last video that they were down for uh, not quite a week, maybe three or four days. I think they were down maybe for five days to visit family. And uh, they spent a whole day with us on Saturday. And it was so good to see them. We missed them. And of course, we missed Piper. Piper had fun with Harley. And um, they did bring down a big, huge suitcase that we had left up there when we visited their ranch up in Idaho back in, was it May or June? And we had that wonderful trip. We were up there for a couple of weeks. But when we came home on the plane, we didn't want to bring two big suitcases. So I left most of what you would call uh, cold weather. It really wasn't cold, but it was more of the sweaters and vests and jackets and things that I brought up. So they brought the suitcase down with them because this time they drove down. And this morning I was outside <laughs> trying to see what I had packed in that suitcase. And I did find a couple of my vests, my Martha Stewart black vest that with the sleeves, I think I showed that to you quite a while ago. Debbie gave me that for my birthday last year. And <clears throat> uh, a jeans jacket. I can't wait to start wearing my jeans jackets and a couple of sweaters and things. So I had some fun unpacking that outside. I still haven't finished. This is my fishing vest from Idaho. Caught a lot of bass in Billy's Pond. And this is a, a thrift. This is one of my Aussie style hats. And this can be worn with so many of the different types of clothing. I especially like it with khaki vests and more sporty things. This is my Martha Stewart vest. Now this vest you can get on Amazon. It comes in all sorts of colors. And Duppy gave me this one for my birthday last year. It's a puffer vest down filled. And what I like about it is the sleeves. I love this Martha Stewart vest and one of my favorite hats too. So that's my best story. Thank you so much for watching. I love all your comments. You comment about everything and I certainly take it all to heart. All the suggestions and tips and everything you give me. Well, I do want to thank you for watching this video today. It is sort of a chatty video with uh, just a lot of gossip and, and catch up news. So, Goodbye for now, my friends. I love you, and God bless us all. And, and please pray for all those in Maine in the recent shooting.